When I went into that garden just after six on the 20th of May, I believed implicitly that this was a work event. Therefore, if he misled Parliament, he must resign. Boris Johnson's future looks poised on a knife edge. Um, I mean, it is extraordinary to think that this is the Prime Minister who delivered for his party uh, the biggest majority for 32 years, delivered Brexit, and now, just two years later, uh, they're talking about getting rid of him. Uh, now, this is all because uh, of Partygate. Uh, the fact that public opinion has turned against him so sharply because people are outraged at the thought that they were asked to follow rules that the Prime Minister was not following himself. It's been a real crisis for the Conservative Party. Sue Gray's report, when it was finally published, was an anti-climax because it was an update. She'd had to take out uh, most of the details of the important alleged parties because the police had announced that they were investigating them and that the Prime Minister was uh, under a criminal uh, investigation. That meant her report was something of an anti-climax, buying the Prime Minister time, but the pressure continued to mount. So let's go back to the beginning to see how this story unfolded. The first death in Britain um, from coronavirus was reported on the 5th of March and suddenly uh, all our lives changed. I mean, the Prime Minister on the 16th of March asked everybody in the country to stay at home and a week later he imposed a statutory lockdown. But since then, it's emerged that he was commuting from Chequers at the time and obviously didn't seem to realise that he was asking people to do things that he wasn't prepared to do himself. What wasn't known at the time, uh, in April, was that Dominic Cummings had uh, left London uh, and gone with his family to, to Durham and then um, uh, had driven around, been to, been to hospital in Durham with his child before coming back to London. And later, when this was reported, of course, it was a huge problem. And that was when the, the issue really came out into the open about whether the government and the government's uh, officials were actually obeying their own regulations. A, a few months later, Professor Neil Ferguson, uh, one of the SAGE advisors, was forced to step back from his position because uh, it was reported that uh, a friend of his was uh, visiting him in his house. And you know, at this time, you've got to remember that the government was consistently tightening the rules and fines were imposed on hundreds of people. And of course, many, many months later, uh, we learned that there were uh, work events, as the Prime Minister called them, happening in the uh, Downing Street Garden. Uh, the first one to be reported was on the 15th of May, was when there was a photograph of the Prime Minister and uh, Carrie Johnson on the terrace in the uh, Downing Street Garden. So it looked like a social occasion, uh, but of course uh, the Prime Minister defended this as uh, a work meeting that was happening outdoors. And of course when Dominic Cummings was challenged about this, he said it was work and that what journalists ought to be asking about was a party that actually happened in the Downing Street Garden uh, on the 20th of May. I mean, this work event was by invitation from Martin Reynolds. He sent out an email to Downing Street staff saying, let's have drinks to celebrate the fact that we've been working so hard and bring your own booze, exclamation mark. It looked like an invitation to a party. That is the moment I think that public opinion decided that the Prime Minister wasn't following his own rules. So then in June, uh, the Prime Minister was surprised with a birthday cake, according to uh, an MP who tried to defend him. So let's fast forward to the November lockdown, which the Prime Minister uh, announced. And shortly after that, Dominic Cummings uh, finally left number 10 uh, and alleges that the Prime Minister and uh, Mrs Johnson had a party to celebrate his departure in the Downing Street flat. After that, we uh, are entering the sort of Christmas party season. Uh, and there are so many allegations of parties that they're quite difficult to keep track of. There was an alleged party at the Treasury uh, on the 25th of November. And then uh, closer to home for the Prime Minister was uh, a leaving party for Cleo Watson, a, a former number 10 aide, on the 27th of November, where uh, Boris Johnson uh, gave a speech uh, to an assembled number, we don't know how many. By December 2020, 
The lockdown was replaced by a three-tier system with London uh, starting off in tier two. There was uh, one in the Department for Education where Gavin Williamson held a party to thank his staff. Sean Bailey, who had been a candidate for London Mayor, had held a party in the basement of the Tory party offices. The next day, Boris Johnson was photographed hosting a Christmas quiz from number 10. And then on the 16th Department of Transport, later apologised after dozens of employees working for Grant Shapps hosted a, a, a Christmas party. And then on the 18th of December, there was the Christmas party in uh, Downing Street uh, with a secret centre and several dozen people. On the 22nd, uh, London was placed in the uh, newly created fourth tier. Uh, Allegra Stratton, who was the Prime Minister's spokesperson, had a rehearsal for a TV briefing at which she was asked about the Christmas party uh, in Downing Street the week before. A mischievous question to which she did not know the answer uh, and giggled with embarrassment. And when, of course, that video came out a year later, it caused real uh, upset among the, uh, the general public. The last parties to take place under some form of restrictions were in the spring of 2021. On the 16th of April, there were two parties that took place in Downing Street on the same night, both leaving parties. But this was the party, one of them, where the celebrations got so out of hand that uh, people spilled into the garden afterwards and broke the Prime Minister's son's swing. Wilfred's feelings about this have not been reported, but the image that the newspapers used to report these two parties was of the Queen at uh, Prince Philip's funeral the next day because she was so strictly observing the, uh, the, the restrictions that everybody else thought that people were following and to find that they weren't being followed in Downing Street I think explains the depth of public anger. Since the parties started to be reported the public uh, and public opinion has turned so sharply against uh, Boris Johnson the Conservatives have gone gone down in the polls and that has put immense pressure on uh, the Conservative MPs and forced them to face the question of whether they should do something about uh, Boris Johnson's leadership. Uh, one of the first signs of the party breaking was Christian Wakeford, uh, the MP for Bury South, marginal constituency, decided that his future lay with the Labour Party. So he crossed the floor of the House uh, at Prime Minister's questions and sat behind Keir Starmer, indicating very visibly uh, how some Conservative MPs thought that Boris Johnson was doomed. Now the thing about defections is that they are extremely rare. They're the hard currency of politics and when people start defecting, especially from one ma major party to the, to the other, that suggests that the tectonic plates of politics are moving. Since then, there have been weeks of pressure on Boris Johnson. Conservative MPs have been sending in letters to Sir Graham Brady uh, to demand a vote of no confidence. People have been resigning from uh, Number 10 and condemning uh, his comments about uh, Jimmy Savile, uh, which he used to smear Sir Keir Starmer with. He spent most of his time prosecuting journalists and failing to prosecute Jimmy Savile, as far as I can make that, Mr Speaker. So now the Prime Minister has been fighting back, trying to rally uh, those forces in the Conservative Party who are loyal to him with uh, Operation Save Big Dog. I don't know which genius came up with that uh, terminology. Um, designed to uh, remind people that he is the Prime Minister who actually delivered uh, their election victory and that he uh, has a special connection with the, with the voters which he hopes to recover. Now he keeps on being knocked off course by allegations of uh, bullying by the, uh, by the whips. Uh, some MPs uh, accuse the whips of uh, threatening them with withdrawal of public funds from their constituency. Uh, and the allegation of bullying was backed up by uh, Christian Wakeford, the uh, MP who defected to, to Labour, who said that uh, Gavin Williamson, the former Education Secretary, had uh, indicated that his constituency would not get a new uh, secondary school uh, if he continued to vote against the government. Other MPs have raised allegations of Islamophobia. Nus, uh, Nusrat Ghani alleging that she was sacked as a minister uh, because of her Muslimness, which was making people uncomfortable, according to a whip. 
Uh, and the chief whip, Mark Spencer, identified himself as the source of that comment and denied it. So all these uh, al alleged uh, lockdown busting parties were being investigated by Sue Gray, a, uh, uh, a senior civil servant, and the police refused to get involved. I mean, no matter how uh, open and shut some of these cases seem to be, the Metropolitan Police said that uh, it wasn't their job to, to investigate until suddenly uh, Cressida Dick, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, uh, said that uh, she was investigating or she was going to investigate uh, at least some of the uh, alleged gatherings uh, in Whitehall and Downing Street over the previous two years. Uh, now that, of course, through the Sue Gray inquiry uh, into disarray and there was confusion about whether uh, or how it could be published. We may never actually see uh, the full Sue Gray report uh, because by the time we've had to wait for the police investigation, uh, it may be too late uh, for it to be published. It may never see the light of day. In the end, uh, most prime ministers are only remembered for one thing. So the question for Boris Johnson is, is he going to be remembered for getting us out of the European Union or will he always be remembered as the Prime Minister who presided over lockdown-busting parties, cake and trolleys of booze?